We've probably heard this uh, many, many times in our religious and spiritual experience. The three dangers, the three dangers to salvation. There are three main dangers to salvation. The world, the flesh, and the devil. This is a very simple categorization of those three dangers to salvation. And of course, Jesus approached this in a way that was not only ingenious in terms of the parables, but the way that they were designed and the way they were put together. He uses things that people were very familiar with, everyday things. He speaks of seeds, wheat, weeds, yeast, sheep, lambs. All these were very, very familiar things to people of that time, and they're familiar to us too, obviously. And so we've come to understand that the creativity of the parables is that the parables are timeless. They're just as applicable today as they were 2,000 years ago. And so we find that the actual scriptures and Bible is that way for different reasons. And so the Bible itself is timeless. And the reason why it's timeless is based on the principle that as much change takes place over the centuries, primarily in technology and so on and so forth, what is at the very base of all that creativity is the fact that human nature never really changes. Human nature is basically the same unless there's other beings on other planets you know, that may be better than us or maybe worse. If you're a science fiction fan, they're either good or bad. But the thing is, for us, human nature is basically the same. And so it addresses human nature. The scriptures in the Bible address human nature, that we understand it very clearly. It's almost a combination of psychology, anthropology, sociology, theology, soteriology, uh, Christology, all the ologies that come forth from it. Now, that's kind of complicated. You know, I had to study all that, but when it comes down to the basic Bible, it's, it's, it's timeless. And so it addresses human nature, and it addresses the reality of a fallen world, a fallen world. Um, the very beginning, in the very beginning, there was a different intention for us. But something happened. Something happened, and we know the world has fallen. Because we're really taught at a very early age to differentiate good from bad. Very basic morality and ethics. A fallen world and salvation, okay, the fallen world, but also the, the sense of salvation. What does it mean to be saved? And so, it says in the scripture, and this is where we begin to see the culmination of everything when we hear these words. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. The field is the world. Now, all Christians basically believe that that is judgment day, the day of judgment. We don't know when that's going to happen. You know, it seems like when the world is in the condition it seems to be in today, it's like, well, it must be very close. <laughs> you know? And every once in a while, I know in Memphis I've seen this, there's always a big sign that goes up, a big billboard that says, the end is near, next month. <laughs> I forget how it's worded, you know? But, um, but it is, it's a reminder. It, it usually doesn't happen you know, in one month. But, uh, but we know the day of reckoning, the day of judgment is coming. So we keep that in mind. And so the world as we know it, the world as we understand it, whether it's our small worlds of individuality or community, but also the broader world, the world has temptations, 
an evil one. We all, we all know this. And so when we think about this next statement, which brings us to prayer and thinking, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Well, the logical question is, who are the righteous? Who are these people? And so we ask this question here today at Mass. Are we the righteous? Pretty interesting. Good question, isn't it? <laughs> are we the righteous? Are you one of the righteous? Do we cause others to sin? Do we cause others to sin? And are we evildoers? I would venture to guess. Well, I want to say this for certainty. Nobody here is an evildoer. You wouldn't be here <laughs> if you were. It'd be kind of sad if you were and you were here. <laughs> you know, but anyway, the whole thing is we have to believe that we are the righteous. There, there, this is evidence. You know, we are the righteous and we do not cause others to sin. Not that we know of. We, we don't do that intentionally. I mean, it's, it's not something we think about. Oh, I'm going to cause them to sin. It's, not, it's like that Shakespearean play, which is named Hamlet. If you know anything about that, Hamlet, his enemy, he was waiting to do him in, but he's going to do it when he was being bad. So then he'd know he'd go to hell. You know, Hamlet, anyway, neither here nor there, but anyway. We are righteous and we do not cause others to sin. We are here today because, this is why we're here today. There's many reasons, but this is one reason why we're here today. Because whoever has ears ought to hear. Now, that's a very simple statement. And Jesus says it, whoever has ears ought to hear. Well, we have ears. And we are hearing today. And so that qualifies us, not only as believers, but in the realm of righteousness, the realm of the saved. And so when we recognize that, let us never, and this is very important, let us never underestimate how blessed we are. Never underestimate that in this world. We're blessed because there are a lot of people out there in the world who are, for whatever complicated worldly reasons, whether it's the world, the flesh, or the devil. And so, St. Gregory, who lived in the sixth century, now that's a long time ago, he said this, the life of good men is a living study. Now that's a simple statement, but it's so deep and so true. The life of good men, or of course, and women, is a living study. Interesting word he uses, study. And so we ask ourselves these questions. Who did you learn from? I can just think of anybody. I can think of some people I learned from. We all can. Who did you learn from? Who were your teachers? Like say, for example, like when you were in high school, Okay, for some of us, that's a long time ago. When we were in high school, who was your favorite teacher? You know, the one that impressed you the most? It's an interesting question. And over this time, how, how, what have you studied? Have you taken time to study something? To study, because that's one of the aspects of the spiritual life, is, is to study. Maybe read the lives of the saints. You know, maybe, you know, read uh, something with these guys now, they're very popular, Bishop Barron and Father Mike Schmidt. They're very popular, they're very media conscious, you know, and, and they do studies. Like I think, what is it, Schmidt does uh, studying the Bible in one year, studying the catechism in one year, and that's all good stuff. And with the magnificence of technology, the good aspect of that is you can have an app for that. You got apps. You know what I'm talking about, right? Apps. If you got a smartphone, if you got a dumb phone, you ain't going to get <laughs> dumb phone. I'm not saying anything about flip phones, you know, but I got a smartphone. Boy, I wasn't too smart. I'm amazed I figured out the smartphone. 
is smarter than me. That's kind of interesting. Okay, now we got this. Have you, this is a good one. This is a good one. Have you stopped learning? Have you ever said to yourself, I'm not learning anymore. I know all I need to know. <laughs> Have you stopped learning? That's a, that's, a, that's a great question, you know? And, 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 and then there's this. Now, we all can relate to this statement by Thomas Moore. He said this. The longer one lives, the more he learns. That's pretty true. Think about when you were young and you didn't know nothing. <laughs> Think how far you have come. You would have had to have learned something over the years. Think about that richness of wisdom that you have. That's a magnificent thing when you think about it. Think of all the collective wisdom in this room now. I mean, everybody could probably write a book, an autobiography, you know, or, or whatever. Everybody's story is interesting. It's a drama. It's something that is an accumulation of experiences and learning that brought us to this very day. And so... We continue to learn and we continue to appreciate that what we've gained is the gift of salvation in the realm of the righteous. Amen. Amen.